Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So obviously Zuru's decision to release the Skins subseries, which basically goes as follows, take a blaster that you released a couple years ago and re-release it again in 15 different color styles with lots and lots and lots and lots of printing. These blasters have sold exceptionally well. In fact, I would argue to say that the Skins blasters have sold better than the original releases, especially in the case of like the Excess, the Flip Fury reskin, or a few other ones that I can't remember the name of right now. And likewise, lots of different ma blaster manufacturers tried to do the same thing because if Zuru can do it, so can we. And I don't think that there is a better telltale sign of distress and desperation than when a company hops on the bandwagon of another popular trend just because of how much money it's making all of a sudden even when they didn't create the idea. Oh, nerf. This is real. <laughs> So this is the Nerf Star Wars skins, I think, the Mandalorian pistol nugget. I don't actually know what this is called. It just says Nerf the Mandalorian on it. So I, I, I genuinely got nothing. But you know what? We're going to take a look at this blaster anyway, because this thing is actually really interesting with the way that it pulled off the skins. Not like anything I have seen before in the sort of skin subseries idea. With that said, let's start off with the design. So the blaster itself is basically just a reskin of the Han Solo's pistol thing, so you can recognize this grip. And the design itself here basically has an extraordinarily well-printed kind of poster-style image of a clip from the Mandalorian films. And you can see that on each side, there is a different printing on it. So it actually is one of the best prints I've ever seen on any Nerf blaster, but there is one really big issue here. Zuru's concept for the skins idea worked because of one specific reason. The skins idea essentially adds lots and lots of details to an otherwise plain blaster, coloring in each tiny intricate little part that you would never expect to be painted on any nerf blaster or anything, and going above and beyond to paint both sides to make the blaster look as good as physically possible. This blaster is loud, it pops in your face, you can see it from anywhere, it's instantly recognized recognizable, there's tons upon tons of details on it, and it looks extremely good and extremely original. Unrecognizable, tons of details, pops in your face. What Hasbro is doing with these skin style blasters is completely different. With the way that they project images onto the blasters rather than trying to add details to existing details, what they actually end up doing is making the blaster hard to recognize. You can obviously see what the shape of the blaster is, but it's hard to make out any of the details that are actually in the shell behind all of the printing. So it's hard to tell what's going on with the blaster itself unless you were to paint over the beautiful intricate printing that they put on the blaster itself. And I don't want to have to do that. I think this blaster looks really cool with these prints. And who knows, we might never see these prints ever again. So let's savor the fact that Hasbro's putting this much printing into their blasters. So all things considered, I'm not sure whether to say this design looks good or not. I am going to put it under the assumption that that is the original intent of this blaster, just to have a very nice looking display blaster. And for that reason, this thing looks really good. I think that they put so much effort into these prints that it stands out more than anything else that Nerf has ever made. Yeah, they always paint their Nerf logo at least on one side, but this is just above and beyond, and they did both sides. In fact, painting all of their stuff on both sides. Even the Nerf logo, all the warning labels, all the logos, everything. Everything is painted on both sides, and I think that is something that Hasbro really should continue with. But what about the ergonomics? This blaster has a main grip and the entire top of the blaster is a priming grip. This main grip looks very bad. It looks really weird. It's flat on the back and on the bottom and on the front, and then it's awkwardly rounded around the sides. It's just like this awkward grip design that doesn't seem like it would work. It's not the best thing in the world but it's definitely not the worst. I have used way worse grips than this. And if you're not gonna be using this thing as your primary, which why would you use a four shot nugget pistol like this as your primary, it actually will do you pretty good. It's not a very bad grip. Though I will say that these angles between the flat parts and the rounded parts are a little bit too jarring for my taste. I think they could have put a little bit more rounding on that to make it a bit more comfortable, but I digress. It's not the worst grip I've ever used and I'll take what I can get. As for the priming grip, it's kind of 
hard to see with all this printing, so if I pull it back, you can see the priming grip better. It's not the best thing in the world, but it is very smooth and easy to grab onto. And it's big enough to get most of your hand on it, so it's not very hard to actually get a grip on the priming grip, which is kind of important. So how does this blaster work? Well, this is actually pretty interesting, because it basically works like the Mega Magnus. You pull this top slide back, you load in up to four elite darts in the top like this, and you push it forward, and you can fire once and the blaster doesn't have slam fire. The prime on this blaster is very nice. It is super smooth and kind of just like buttery to pull back. As for the actual trigger pull, it's got kind of a smushy trigger a little bit down, and then it's very poppy. I'm not sure whether to say the trigger is good or bad, but honestly, I don't mind it. I think it's an all right trigger. One thing I would like to note here is loading the darts in the top. This is about 50 times more reliable and smooth and enjoyable, what the heck, that's something like the Mega Magnus or any of the Ultra Blasters that do the same thing. It feels really good to load darts into this blaster, and it feels very reliable to load darts into this blaster, and I have never once had a hiccup with it, which is a first, because even the Magnus gave me trouble with its internal magazine loading system. I think that it's great that this blaster works so much better than those, because full-length darts are just more conventional than Mega Darts or Ultra Darts or anything else. So that means that this could actually be a rather viable four-shot internal magazine loading sidearm if it had any sling points, which it does not. Oh, come on. So what do I think of this blaster? Oh yeah, you can do this. Oh, anyway, what do I think of this blaster? It's pretty good. I mean, honestly, it's better than I was originally expecting. I was honestly expecting this to be like an ion fire where every time you open it, you just had to breach load one. But the fact that it has an internal magazine, even if it only holds four darts, is honestly a very pleasant surprise. And the act of loading darts into this and shooting darts out of it is way more reliable than I would expect out of a brand tie-in like this. Usually brand tie-ins like Fortnite or Roblox or Minecraft or Star Wars have botched internals that make it harder to actually do the blast functions with than something like an Elite Series Blaster or even an Elite 2.0 Series Blaster nowadays. I know that sounds crazy to say, but seriously, they are improving. But honestly, this blaster is made really well. The plastic's nice and thick, it's rather comfortable, it works reliably, and it shoots nice. I've only had a couple hiccups with the darts, and I'm pretty sure that just comes down to the fact that squibs are just inevitable every once in a while. Sometimes darts just come flying out of the barrel and tumble out off out of the air, but that happens with any blaster in my collection so I can't really hold it against this one. With that said, if you want to get this blaster, I'll link it in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.